Hey guys, hope you can hear me over the rain. Sorry about that, I have a metal roof. I wanted to make this video today kind of as a follow-up to my first raw dog beating video. I got some questions in the comments and a lot of uh, opinions, so I just kind of wanted to address why I do things the way that I do them and my thinking behind it. Disclaimer before we begin, I'm not a vet, I'm not a pet nutritionist, and if you're able to do things a different way and you want to put forth the effort and the time and the money to do things a certain way, then more power to you. But this is the method that I choose to use and the one that I think that I'm able to stick to the most. So I think I'll start with the frequently asked questions first. I wrote everything down on my iPad because I have a terrible memory and I won't be able to remember everything that I wanted to talk about. So. A few people asked why my dog is so big. Typically German Shepherds top out around 90 pounds or so, um, and my dog is anywhere from 110 to 115. Um, that's because he actually has giant Alaskan Malamute in him as well. We got a DNA test done because he turned out to be so big, and it said that he had 1 8 Malamute in him, so that explains the big size and the excessive drooling. We only feed between 1 and 2 percent of his body weight. For him, that turns out to be about 1.7%. A lot of people mentioned in the comments that you have to have 2-3% to of your dog's weight every day for the raw diet, but he's very sedentary. Um, he likes staying indoors. He doesn't like going outside. He's definitely a pampered, air-conditioned dog. He does not miss a meal. <laughs> I'll insert a clip in a second and show you a full body picture of him. Trust me, he is not starving. 1.7%, which is two pounds per day for him is plenty. Free. Good boy. Are you starving, bud? No. people asked what type of grinder we use. We use the Weston uh, Pro Series number 12. We got it online somewhere, maybe Cabela's. I can't really remember where we got it, but they have it all over the place. I think Websterant is the cheapest that I found. I think it's like $4.99 on there or $4.49, something like that. People ask if I rotate his protein. No, I don't rotate his proteins. Um, the thinking behind that is if a dog continues to eat the same type of food over and over, they eventually end up building up an intolerance or an allergy to it, and we haven't had any issues. Um, I know a lot of dogs out there have sensitivity to chicken for whatever reason, but he hasn't had any issues. He's doing great on it, so if it's not broken, I'm not going to fix it. We're, we're fine with just chicken for now. <laughs> Some people asked where the veggies were. The only vegetables that he gets in his diet are from scraps from when I'm cooking. Um, he really enjoys carrots, cooked broccoli, um, bell peppers, things like that. So when I'm cooking a lot or if I'm having a snack and he's there, I'll toss him a carrot or something like that. But I, I don't incorporate it into his daily meals. Uh, someone asked about grains. Um, someone even mentioned that <laughs> Grains are vital for dogs, and I'm sorry, but that's just not true. We haven't been feeding him grains for over three years now, and he's doing great. Dogs don't really have a nutritional need for grains, but I don't see anything wrong with giving them to them. If your dog enjoys grains and treats with grains in them, things like that, and they don't have a negative reaction to it, just like anything, then go ahead and give it to them. I mean, for example, we brew our own beer at home, and at the end of each batch, there's a bunch of spent grain and I make dog treats out of that and he loves them. So I'm not incorporating that into his daily meals, but I'm also not restricting it. He loves the dog treats and it, it doesn't give him an upset stomach or anything. So I don't think there's anything wrong with grains being thrown in here and there, unless your dog has a stomach problem with them or something like that. People also asked if I transitioned slowly when I switched him over from kibble to raw food. I didn't, I just switched him cold turkey. Um, people do make changes slowly if they notice that their dog has stomach issues or something like that but if I just switched him right over he had diarrhea for like a day um, and then everything was fine so you can mix it slowly and do like half kibble half raw food initially if you want to but we just went all in oh another question was how I care for his teeth um, we actually don't do anything with his teeth now. Um, there's no starches in the raw food, so there's nothing to build up um, plaque or tartar on his teeth. 
There's also natural enzymes in the uh, in the meat that help with bacteria in his mouth, and he doesn't really have any buildup or anything on his teeth. Um, even if he did, one of his favorite things to do is to find coconuts in our yard and tear them apart. So the coconut husks actually get in there and do a pretty good job of cleaning anything that might be left on his teeth. People also asked what type of supplements I use. Um, the only supplements at the time that I was using when I made that video were the hemp chews. Um, and that was for uh, the, glu the glucosamine mainly because he has hip dysplasia. Hemp powder, MSM, organic hemp seed oil, ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C, uh, vitamin E, and then some other stuff in there as well. But that's all we were giving him at that time. We have since switched up the meal a little bit and we've added in grass-fed and finished beef organs that are just freeze-dried and powdered. This is a new addition. We never used to do this before, so it's just a way to get more organs into his diet um, because the only ones that I can really find in a supermarket are hearts and liver. While we're on the topic of what's added to the food, I wanted to kind of talk about the balanced dog food diet. So there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of people that are die-hard sticklers for the balance that has been laid out there. So when it comes to the raw diet, there are basically two schools of thinking. You've got the whole prey model raw diet, or PMR, or you have the biologically appropriate raw food, or BARF. So PMR versus BARF. So the BARF model, the breakdown would be 70% muscle meat, 10% raw edible bone, 5% liver, 5% other organs, 7% vegetables, 2% seeds and nuts, and 1% fruit. I do not have the time, desire, the money, the energy to get into that. If people are able to do that, then great. They're able to provide their, their animals with tons of nutrients and, and everything um, that they might need. But for me, that's just, it's too much for me. I wouldn't be able to stick with that. I know that I wouldn't be able to be perfect with it. And to me, being able to adhere to something is way more important than doing a great job 50% of the time. So the model that I fo follow more closely is the PMR model, the prey model raw. And that consists of 80% muscle meat, 10% raw edible bone, 5% liver, and 5% other organs. So that's a lot easier. It cuts out seeds, nuts, fruits, vegetables. It basically just follows the school of thought that if a dog in the wild was going to go hunting, they would eat a whole animal, and that's pretty much it. So I'll admit that even though his diet more closely resembles the PMR version, when I first started and for the first three years, it definitely didn't follow those percentages at all. He was getting probably closer to 30% bone and the rest was meat. I would throw in organs and eggs every couple of days, but I didn't follow it. I didn't measure out the liver or anything like that. And now instead of worrying about that at all, I just throw the, the capsules in of the powdered stuff. But my whole way of thinking and my whole point in doing it the way that I did it is that if I hadn't done it like that, I would not have switched to raw because sitting down and formulating all of this stuff just seemed like way too much to do. It was discouraging. I just wouldn't have done it. I would have tried to go to the store and buy a high quality kibble that claimed that it had all of the nutrients that a dog needs. And look, we see it all the time with all of these kibble companies and human food too. All of these companies claiming certain things and then it turns out that they're actually not using any of that stuff at all. They, they say they get third party testing and that turns out not to be true. It's just there's so much out there, there's so much deception. A business is a business to try to make money first and foremost, regardless of what they say, because if they can't keep the lights on, then they're not going to be able to provide any product at all, let alone a quality one. If you don't spend all of that time and energy and money pinpointing and making sure that your human diet is perfect 100% of the time, then in my opinion, your priorities are off. Because if you're spending all of <laughs> that time, money, and effort on, granted, they're members of the family, you love them, but unless you have your child's diet or your diet completely perfect, you shouldn't be judging other people and you certainly shouldn't be getting hostile in the comment section about somebody else trying their best. Food is such a 
touchy topic um, whenever it comes to dogs or humans. And just like us, dogs are extremely adaptable. I mean, kibble has only been around for like 160 years and dogs are already able to survive on it. So clearly they're able to adapt and overcome just like we are. People are able to survive on all kinds of diets, keto, vegetarian, vegan, carnivore, dairy-free, gluten-free. There's so many different diets out there that you can choose from, so clearly there's not one set way that you have to eat. It's the same for dogs. And humans are able to tell you when they feel better. Dogs aren't able to tell you that, so people are all just assuming that this is what a dog needs. So all I'm trying to say here is that if it's not perfect, don't be discouraged. I fed him a completely unbalanced diet for three years and he is doing so much better than he was doing on a kibble diet on a high quality kibble diet at that that i'm not even worried about it being un unbalanced right now you can always start with a very simple unbalanced diet on the raw food diet and get comfortable with that become adherent to that diet be make it a habit make it a priority and then from that point once you feel comfortable with that and it's not overwhelming anymore, then you can go into adding all of the organ meat and possibly switching up proteins if you want to. You are going to be the only one that's able to determine what is best for your dog because you know how they act. You know their behavior. You're going to know if something is making a difference in his diet or if something's going to make him uncomfortable. You're going to know if it's making his stomach upset, if he has diarrhea or he's vomiting you're going to be the only one that can make that determination. So if you want to start a raw diet, don't let all of these people that are perfectionists and are so occupied with getting everything 100%, 100% of the time, don't let them discourage you and just ignore them. Because let me tell you, I posted a portion of my last video on TikTok and for whatever reason, it got <laughs> hundreds and thousands of views and people were furious with me. But you know what? There are also so many people out there that have thanked me because my initial diet was so simple that they actually were able to start the diet and now their dogs are so much better off because they're able to adjust and add more in the future. So if you're just getting started, do your own research and figure out how you wanna formulate it, but don't worry about being a perfectionist right off the bat. And don't let people bully you into not even trying it because you're not doing it right. You just have to do something that you're going to be able to adhere to especially in the beginning, that's gonna be the most important part. Come on. <laughs> get out of here. Anyway, off my soapbox, let me get into how I feed him now um, versus how I used to feed him. Starting out, Sprocket was about 145 pounds. He was very overweight. He didn't really have any energy. He hated running around. He's a very lazy dog. He always has been just since he was a puppy. He never really went through the zoomies or anything like that. He's just always been kind of a lazy dog. He's kind of like, you know, an old wise man. He just likes laying there and looking handsome. So we ended up figuring out what his ideal body weight was, which our vet told us would be about 110, 115 pounds, anywhere around there because of the dog breed mix that he is. So we went based off of that. We fell between the the one and two percent because he's so sedentary. We ended up falling on two pounds, which ends up being about 1.7 percent of his ideal body weight. We went with this amount because it's a nice even number. It's easy to pre-package for when we do our meal preps, and then it also leaves a little bit of wiggle room for anything that we decide to add on top of his meal, like eggs. Um, we go fishing every once in a while so he can get part of the whole fish, as well as any treats or vegetables while I'm cooking, things like that. If your dog is more active than mine, then obviously you can go up from there. Um, two to three percent is what the, I guess, what the typical range is, or you can even go higher than that if you have a very active dog. But for us, that's what works. So we stick with two pounds every single day. So our initial base meal, we would get a 40 pound box of chicken leg quarters. We would grind that up. We would put one pound in each plastic container and we would freeze it. Then in the morning, we would give him one container and at night we would give him one container. We thought about three days worth in our fridge at a time. In the mornings, we would add his glucosamine tablet, his uh, hemp juice, and then every couple days we would throw in some chicken liver or an egg or something like that. We didn't do it every single day. It was just kind of a, an add-in when we stopped and got it from the grocery store. Now how I feed him, it's just a little bit different. The typical 
bone percentage of a chicken leg quarter is 30%. We wanted to get that down to 15%, so all we did was cut the amount of chicken leg quarter that we were giving him in half. But we didn't get super technical in it, so now we're feeding a pound of chicken leg quarter, a pound of raw meat, whether that's um, ground chicken breast, ground chicken thigh, um, ground beef, whatever it might be. It's just one pound of chicken leg quarter, which now has 15% of the overall two pounds in bones, and then the one pound of raw meat. Then on top of that, we add an egg, every single morning now um, to make up for potential fat content if we were to use chicken breasts um, which is a less fatty cut than say a chicken thigh so that still equals two pounds and then we just add these beef organs the serving contains 600 milligrams of grass-fed beef liver heart kidney pancreas and spleen so you've got a little bit of the the secreting organs and the non-secreting organs which pretty much covers everything that you're going to need so yeah that's how we feed him now. Um, I just started this week, so it's definitely a lot more balanced than what we were doing before. He's definitely getting a lot more minerals and vitamins from the organs that he was lacking before. Um, so we'll see if he actually has any noticeable changes in his behavior or his energy levels or anything like that. I kind of doubt the energy level thing because he's just a couch potato and there's not really much we can do about that. Although he does have more energy in the winter time. Um, right now he just refuses to go outside for anything more than going to the bathroom and eating uh, because it's Florida and it's hot. So he pretty much just lays in our shower to get cool or lays on our tile floor or something like that. But yeah, that's about it. Those are the changes that we've made. Those are the questions that I've been asked. I'm sure I'm still going to get some scrutiny somewhere um, about the way I feed him, as we all do. You can't post anything on the internet these days without getting people yelling at you one way or another. But the best advice I have for you is if you want to start, just start and you'll work out the kinks along the way. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time.